Howdy folks and welcome back to Crazy Gamer Models. How's everybody doing today? This is going to be part 5 of my building techniques on the Tiger 1. I guess this is turning kind of a build review more than techniques, but this time I'm going to show you some techniques I talked about from um, video 4. It's about making a grab handle, um, a grab bar, like this one right here. This little guy right here that is gone. Well, yep, it's gone. Well, if you lose your grab bar, I'm going to show you how to make one, which I was going to do anyway. Oh, I found it. Look at that. Wow. That's some luck right there. It was just laying on my bench. These small pieces, I've been losing them and finding them, losing them and finding them. But let me see if I put it on here if you can see how small it is. See how small that is, guys? This is the lens cap for my camera. A little tiny piece. Alright, so I'll put that there, and then let's show you where it goes in the book here. Alright, so it goes right onto this hatch, which I have glued up and ready to go, because it gives me a little bit more to bite on. So I'm going to drill these two holes out, it's going to go right there. Why do a metal grab bar over plastic grab bar? A, I think it looks better. I think you could nick it. I think you can put little bends in it to make it look more realistic for weathering. Um, plus, this has micro flash and a sprue nib that if you start scraping it down, you're going to thin out sections. You're going to make it, you're going to bend it, and it's just not going to look as good. Um, it doesn't take very much time. It doesn't take a lot of tools. I'm going to show you different ways you can do it with different tools. Um, I'm going to start with the most extreme way. And the most durable you can use for a grab bar, that's going to be one of your more difficult ways. And that is going to be music wire, or piano wire. This is um, 0.02, 20 thousandths diameter um, piano wire, or about 5, 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.508 millimeter. Um, it has a gauge to tell you what string it is, but oh, it says on the back. But this stuff is dirt cheap, and you get a quarter pound, which is, um, if you can see in there, don't ever take it out of the box because it'll unwind and then just be a mess. Um, just more than you'll ever need. Um, be careful getting the bigger, thicker diameters of piano wire. They are under a lot of tension, and they do not like being wound up tight. So when you cut those those bands that hold them together, if they're not in the box, they will fly apart and they will do some damage to some stuff. Trust me. Um, I opened some um, one millimeter clip this clips on some one millimeter in the box and it unspun and about destroyed the box. Scared me. Let me tell you. Oh, I jumped, dropped the box on the ground. Um, so I measured this grab bar. It's a half millimeter. Um, use a pair of calipers. This is just a pair of Amazon cheap calipers. If you measure it, and it's about 0.5. There's a smidge of flash on there, so it's a half millimeter. So I got this 0.508 millimeter um, piano wire. Now, finding the end of the piano wire is always, always the trick. I normally just cut me a new end because I never need long pieces of this. Now, be advised when you cut piano wire, your sprue cutters will break before it cuts this. Your regular hardware pliers will most likely not cut it. These are heavy-duty um, electrical wire pliers that are designed. These are listed to say they can cut piano wire. They have a hardened face. And even these, through the one millimeter stuff, have a hard time. Um, actual pliers that cut piano wire are super expensive. And th these weren't cheap either. These were in the $40 range. They work. So I'm just going to cut off a piece. I cut off way more than I need. But um, I have so much of it and it's easier to work with when you have um, some more. Also, this stuff makes great antennas. Because of the flexibility of it. You know, if you brush across it, you're not going to bend it. You know, and you can straighten it. Um, you can carefully straighten it. Things like that. But we're going to make a grab bar here. So, 
Uh, now to bend this you have a couple options. So first we talked about getting the wire off. There's the piano wire. Um, you can get one of these jigs like this um, trumpeter master tools photo etch bender. It has a nice grab bar section on the back. You can just take your grab bar here and line it up to the one you need, which would be that one right there. Be this hole and this hole, the first and third hole. And then, boom, you just bend it in between there. And if you have the softer wire, like the lead or the copper, you can just pull it straight down. And it'll make a nice round end on it. Or you can bend it with um, bending pliers. And these are some nice rounded um, Zeron bending pliers. I wish they had these sent to me. So you can take it. Now, I, I like to give myself plenty of room to work with, and I just cut off the excess. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to bend this like so. Now, as you can see there, I have a 90-degree bend right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in here. And I'm going to wrap it around. See, and then if you try to do the piano wire that way, it wants to get all antsy. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And I'm just going to use it as a gauge to mark where to grab it with my pliers. And it is sharp. I just stab myself with it, and it is sharp. Okay. So, yeah, see, just true blood. Just stab myself with that wire. Careful about that, guys. So I'm just going to slide it in there, and then I'm going to grab it right where the bend's got to go, and then I'm going to put a little bit in, I'm just going to bend it down, bend it down. Uh, it may take you a couple tries to get it get it right. That's why I cut off a little extra. But see, there we got the same size as that. Now, I'm telling you, when you glue this in to the top of your... You're going to drill these holes out. I'll show you that in a minute. When you glue this in there, you're not knocking this piano wire off. I'm telling you, you're going to tear it out of the plastic before before you knock it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it a little bit. Show I'm going to cut it even on both sides. With the, and I'm going to make sure the holes line up. Yep, they line up. So now I can drill that with a half millimeter and I can slide that in and then cut it from the bottom. So that is making one out of piano wire. So we'll set that one off to the side. And now we'll look at some different stuff. So I have some leaded wire here. Now, if I get some 20 thou leaded wire, there's 15, 20 thou leaded wire, and I pull it off here. That should be a half mil. Close to it. Yeah, close to half mil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a section of this. This I just use a cheap knockoff Zeron pliers. I try not to use my sprue cutters for anything but sprue. So, uh, with the leaded wire, I know I cut off way too much, but some of this, it damages easy. So, I'm just going to pick a section that's not damaged here. So, basically, I'm going to take it, I'm going to make a kind of a loop here in the non-damaged section, and I'm going to stick it in hole.
Now this would never be a choice for me, but if you want a mangled, damaged grab bar, this would be this would be the stuff you want to use. And see right there, you have a grab bar. You can put flats on it. You can mangle it up. It's going to be very difficult to glue in because it's so loose. But there you go. There would be a grab bar out of um, lead, leaded wire, which, like I said, I would never do that. But if you're doing a certain kind of weathering technique and you want it bent and mangled and you want to get that real easy, you could do that. You could coat it in some super glue to stiffen it up. But that's basically um, lead wire doing it that way. So let us um, look at some other stuff here. Okay, so I have some of these labeled. So, 18. This is dead soft copper, and this is dead soft brass. I'm going to show you how to make it in these two 20 gauge and 18 gauge. 20 gauge is too big, 16 is too big. So, the higher the gauge, the smaller the wire. 22 is 0. 0.6. I think this is 0.5 millimeter. So I have some 0.5 millimeter copper wire here. Um, I believe it's from RB Productions or RB Tools. So 22 gauge. Let me check this 22 gauge here. Let's see what the diameter of that is. Okay, so the 22 gauge, 24 gauge, I'm sorry, the 24 gauge is the right size. It's 0.5 millimeter. So we'll get rid of the 22. We'll grab the 24 in brass. So we'll move all these that are not going to be compatible out of the way. And now let's, show, let's see what I have left here. I have a 24 gauge and dead soft brass. A 24 gauge or 0.5 millimeter in a dead soft copper and then I have a 0.5 millimeter um, copper wire that is sold as for modeling to make grab bars and handles we will start with that first now this one I don't want to waste that much because this stuff wasn't the cheapest stuff in the, in the market Cut this little section off with my crappy knockoff cutters and put it away. And as you can already probably see, it is very malleable. And as we go across here, some of these are going to be less malleable. As I showed you, the piano wire is the least malleable. This is the RP tools. That's what it is. RP tools copper. Um, this is actually sold for grab handles and we're going to do the same procedure we're going to bend it a little bit into shape and we're going to slide it into the two things and then we're going to kind of mash it down with our back of our tweezers here to get it into shape there Get it looking good. Now be careful where you pull it straight on the wire because you don't want to put a flat spot on the part of the grab bar. So slide that out and then we'll just straighten it up. And then there's one made out of copper that is manufactured that is sold for making grab bars this is sold to hobbyers as a grab bar material I believe you can find it on Amazon it comes in 0.5 millimeters and 0.6 millimeters is all I've been able to find them I have more but this is good for 1 35th scale grab bars as you can see now this is um, from Copper Wire USA. 
This is a sample pack. It came with a bunch of different gauges of dead soft copper. And um, it, it's going to behave kind of similar to the copper we just used. I will clip a piece off. And I will do the same thing I did before. Tuck it in the... I, I can't get over if you have if you are doing modeling and you can't and you're gonna do anything that has photo etch or you want to replace grab bars this medium master tools trumpeter photo etch bender is um which is great because you can do your photo etch with it on most 35th scale models and then you can make grab bars on the back. They make a large and a small version um, that do not do grab bars. They just do bigger and smaller things. I think it's worth it to get the grab bar ability from the medium. And it also covers a wide range of grab bars. Plus you can do you know the different photo etch has the different things. As you can see, I use it for this all the time. Um, this one on the dead soft cop on the dead soft brass which is going to be a little bit different than the copper that I've unwound almost all the way. I'm going to get this back in the bag. Yes. And again, this was a sample pack on Amazon of a bunch of different dead soft brass. So I'm going to take my dead soft brass here. And this time, I'm going to bend it with the pliers. I'm going to roughly put a 90 in it. Now, these are round nose jaws. They're on pliers. They're not square. They're round nose to give you that rounded edge. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use the jig at all. I'm going to use the original piece to kind of line this up. I'm going to place it down there. This is going to be kind of difficult. If you get a rule, where is a ruler? Oh, this is weird. I can't find my rule. Well, I definitely should have been prepared and had my ruler. Oh, wait, I know where it is. Hold on, guys. So, if you take this, this is a English in metric, so we'll put it, we'll check the metric and see if it lines up with anything. So I'll take my tweezers here, and I'll put, I'll start on the three. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a half a centimeter or five millimeters. I'll um, we'll try to let you see that. See that it's a half a centimeter or five millimeters um, from center to center on the post. And if you lose your grab bar, you can take your calipers and you can measure center to center of your holes and you get five millimeters. So, or you can measure outside to outside of your holes and you get 5.67 so you know outside to outside on your grab bars is 5.67 but we're going to come up to this ruler here I'm going to try to I'm going to try to get this on camera because I know a lot of you don't have the photo edge bending tool so I'm going to try to show you on this ruler here so I'm um, again it's a half half centimeter or five millimeters I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to grab it with the tip of my round nose pliers right before the five millimeter mark. And then I'm going to roll it down. Now, if I measure that on this camera, it's a smidge over, but I can, I can, I can tweak that a little bit.
you want to be careful squeezing on the on the on the wire because it is dead soft and it will mar so okay that should be better let's just check it with the calipers where it's going in the holes here 0.82 it's got a little bulge in it yeah so there we go that'll work just flatten that down a little bit okay so there we go we got that grab bar now I just made all these grab bars and what do you use um <clears throat> like I said if you want extreme durability you have the piano wire you're not gonna bump that and knock that off it is I'm not saying the most difficult but it is a pain in the butt to mess with it is super pain in the butt see um, it's sharp as you can see I poked myself and you have to have more heavy-duty tools to cut it and to bend it um, sometimes it can be hard to get in small quantities but like I said it makes antenna it makes very durable things that hang off small on the side of stuff that aren't gonna break off they're gonna flex instead of break um, you have the lead wire if you want it mangled up which is easy to use we have the copper wire made for uh, modelers for grab bars and then we have the dead soft copper and then we have this um, brass I like the durability of the brass myself personally um, I, I made my last grab bar for this one right here on my Berg Panther that one it's hard to see I made that one out of the grab bar the grab bar material from modelers and it got a little mangled up on top, which doesn't look too bad. And it survived paint and stripping of paint. So the, the ones for grab handles for modelers by that RP Tools is pretty good. But I'm going to try this brass this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the legs even. Cut the legs even like that. So I got a little bit. I know that's too tall, but I'm going to drill it into the top of this. Now, this is a full interior, and you can see the underside with the latches and stuff, but I did glue this shut, so I'm not worried about it. If you didn't glue it shut, then you would need to do a different approach, which I will show in a future video. So I will drill a point. Five, and this is just a micro box high-speed twist drills they're not the best they're not the worst I've had better the carbide ones for printed circuit boards are the best but I packed mine away when I transferred studios and I don't know where they are but what is nice is this Serret um, number s162 pin vices it's got um, four different um, chuck pin vices in it um, and it does a um, great job. So I'll take this little one here, and it's through hole. So the whole length, the drill bit goes through. Um, if I if I needed a pin vise for modeling, I would not buy these because of the price. But I, these were a work leftover. So nobody was using them, and they were getting dusty. And I was allowed to take them, which is fine by me. Okay, so. All right. So there we go. We got that locked in there straight. And it's just, you know, a little thing. And then we're going to come in here. And it's already got the divots for us. We're going to come in here nice and straight. And we're just going to drill right through doesn't take much and we're right through there you can barely see on the other side where we went through and now let's see if our brass fits in there okay so 
it fits in there. We just need to set the height. Okay, so now when you get the height you like and the level you like, push it back. Once you glue it, you can make some final adjustments. So you get that. I am going to use a little. I want to get the super glue out. I I swear, guys, I'm more organized than this. Oh, here it is. So what I'm going to do is I get I use um, water bottle caps. We recycle the bottles, but we keep the caps for this sort of thing. And this is Zappa Gap Slow Gap because it was what I had access to right this second instead of looking for my Star Bond, which I would prefer Star Bond. But this will work. And then I'm going to use the first glue looper I grab, which is... Flexifile CI applicator, which is just basically a cut sewing needle. It's basically what it is. And then I'm going to come in the back here with the CA, and I'm just going to tap it on there like so. And the good thing about using a softer, other than the piano wire, you can cut it to size after you get it glued in. And then if you worry about paint sticking to the, um, the brass, I mean, if you have photo etch, a lot of people have issues with the paint sticking to it. I brush on all my photo etch and brass. I brush this um, liquid surface primer on there um, from Tamiya, just on the brass parts, and it seems to, I don't know, it seems to make the paint stick. So, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't done a full testing of it, but it seems to help. So, there we go. We got a little brass grab bar on there. When that super glue dries, I'll do some final adjustments, but there we go. Brass grab our, um, if I had my Optivisor on and it was closer, I could probably do a slightly better job, but this is just showing you the different techniques on how to do it. I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, give me a like if you liked the video, subscribe. Um, you can visit my Patreon if you want more help. I do different tool reviews. I show you what's inside boxes. As I get them and um, I do these building technique videos and um, I have some other builds going on. So if you want to check those out, check out the rest of the channel. For Crazy Gamer Models, I am the Crazy Gamer. You guys have a fantastic day.